on behalf of PerfectGame.tv, my name is Darren Sutton. Let's swing by campus. Dallas Baptist University. Their head coach is Dan Heathner, and it feels like every single year, albeit a mid-major school, they're setting the standard and heading to the NCAA tournament. But in our conversation, I don't start there. I start as a dad because his son Luke was a 2020 Perfect Game All-American. And in a very unique and interesting twist, Dan himself was an alum of the very, very early days of PG in Iowa. So this is great, Dan. I appreciate you spending time with us as you head out to the field with your team here in just a few minutes. As a dad, I'm going to start with Luke because the Perfect Game All-American experience the National Showcase experience. Um, as a father, look, your son, so much fun to watch him earn it and what he did at National. But how proud were you to, as someone who went through Perfect Game in a unique way, to watch what he accomplished this summer? Yeah, I was incredibly proud of him. And um, I think especially knowing kind of where he's come from, how he's done it. Last summer, um, he went to the, the underclass All-American Games and and that was a, a kind of a stretch for him. I mean, he was a good player, but, you know, it's just continued to develop physically kind of he, he's not an early maturing type guy. So a little bit undersized. And he made it out of goal last year. At the end of last year, I asked him, OK, what what are your goals for this coming year? And he said he wanted to make the, you know, play in the area code games in California. And he wanted to play in the, you know, play in the All-American Classic you know, seeing that he made that goal and then his work matched up with the goal and then to to get rewarded with that experience was just incredible. So here's the thing, right? He asks you that last year and then the pandemic hits and there is no season for him. So he can't really show anything on the baseball field, but he's got half a team, more than half a team at home, right? You have five boys, David, Zachariah, Titus, Jacob, and your, and your lovely wife, Liz, who's got to be amazingly patient with all those men around. But so... Tell me about the workouts they did. He shared a little bit, but you're a dad. You looked out the window. You went out and joined them some. You're a college coach. What kind of workouts did Luke and his brothers do during the pandemic to help him get to where he was? Yeah, they did a great job. Um, he's he's always enjoyed working out. So like lifting weights, doing that kind of stuff. Like he he's pretty knowledgeable on it. He likes researching those things. So we have a little, we kind of have a little barn in our in our backyard and we made a little weight room in there. So he and his brother, David, the the 15 year old, they would lift together and he would lead the way on that. Um, I honestly, I didn't do a thing with them from a lifting standpoint, cause that's kind of his passion and something he really enjoys. And then they came up with, you know, they wanted a throwing program that where they could improve their arm strength. So I kind of helped them research that and gave them the program, kind of taught them how to do it at the beginning. And then they just, they'd go to town on it. Um, and, and David, the 15 year old, he wants to be a pitcher. He really loves pitching. So um, Luke had a great throwing partner there and they, they just kind of feed off each other. They get along really well. They work well together. Um, and then the challenge was, you know, campus is kind of shut down for a while. We live close to campus, but, you know, we weren't supposed to be coming up. So they're like, hey, dad, can we put up a batting cage in the backyard? So we started researching that. That turned into a great just family project to, you know, construct that, put it together, kind of good memory from the, the pandemic. And so now they have everything they need. They had a weight room, they had batting cage. Um, and then we do have kind of an open pasture area too. So we made a little infield there. It wasn't dirt, it was really choppy, which actually I learned as a coach, I think that's probably the best thing you can do for an infielder is give them a bad field because their feet get better really fast when they, when they see they got to pick out a hop and not just wait for the good one. So yeah, it was really fun to watch how they work during that time. And also, um, you know, for me to be there and be able to be with them during that time too, where usually, you know, I'm off training our team and in the springtime traveling all over the place. So um, obviously it was a, a horrible situation for everybody, but um, I think we really made some memories and um, I know I'll always remember it. Yeah, incredible. That was the blessing for all of us parents that uh, whether it was college age kids or are you as a college coach so busy? We were with our kids more than we ever thought we would. Times will probably uh, agreeable, never have again. So you have a school with an enrollment of, you know, 4,500, 3K if you look at the undergrads, yet you are perennially in the NCAA tournament. You're a team that is hosted. Um, you're a dangerous, dangerous mid-major program. Uh, what are some of the tried and true standards to do that? You gotta have good players, right? No doubt, you have to have good players. You can't do it without that. But beyond that, what are some of the standards where you pull athletes to your to your campus, have guys that are high picks like Burl Caraway, 
Um, I, I'm curious, Dan, what are some of those standards? Yeah, the big thing for us, it's we're pretty specific about it. It's about finding the right fit as a player. And obviously, you're right. You have to have talent. Uh, but to us, the character is it's everything because our thing is development. And, and that's what we sell to recruits. And that's who we are day in and day out as we want to. Our, our goal is to be the best in the country at developing our players on the field. Uh, but we're in a very unique situation too, where it's they're going to get a great education, but we also want to, you know, develop them in their character and their faith as well. So I get in trouble if I don't let you go without asking you about your perfect game memories when the doors were first open and the cages were being, uh, you know, used by guys like you. Iowa City High School, right? Yes. So, so I'd love to know. Just take it from here. Your perfect game memories when you were the high school player. Okay. So. I was in high school, graduated in 96, so it's the fall of 1995, Iowa City, Iowa. I'm a baseball junkie. You know, at this point, I know baseball is my thing. I'm not, I'm not going to play basketball. I'm not doing any other sport. I just want to get ready for baseball. And at the time, there's not indoor cages all over the place like there are now, especially in Iowa. So I remember we, you know, we'd try to go to the University of Iowa facilities, and we'd get kicked out of those all the time. And and then I hear about this place opens up in Cedar Rapids, right across from the Colonel Stadium, perfect game. Um, so I just drive up there, you know, it's the fall of 1995, it opens up, I think they had four cages or something, this little 10 by 10 office. And, you know, I, I drive up, get a membership thing there. I, literally, I think I might've been the first, the first perfect game person. Wow. And I just go up and hit every afternoon. I'd, I'd make the half hour drive after school, go up there and hit. Um, it was at the time it was Jerry Ford, his son, Andy, Jason Gerst, Tyson Kim, um, obviously his wife, Betty, she was there almost every day as well, but it was just the four of them just in there, just talking baseball. Um, you know, I'll, I'll never forget. I'd be in there. There was a, I remember a minor league guy would, he would come most days as well. And he'd be hitting in there and, you know, Jerry would come out and he'd give me a suggestion on, Hey, try this out. You know, they're doing lessons too, but he didn't, he never charged me for it. He'd just walk over and, hey, why don't you try this out on your swing? And he'd work with me for a little while, then go back into the office. And um, so it was really neat to see how it started and, and then see what it's become today. You know, obviously it evolved from Iowa to the Midwest to nationally, and now Perfect Game is what it is today. Amazing. Thank you for your memories, my friend. God bless you and your family and look forward to running into you in person. All right. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Peace. By the way, it needs to be pointed out that when the pandemic hit, Dallas Baptist was 12 and five. They had gone on the road to beat North Carolina winning a weekend series. They didn't lose a single weekend series in the shortened season of 2020. Incredible coach, unique program, and one heck of a dad. I'm Darren Sutton. This is PerfectGame.tv.